next on the season finale of UCF Sports Night. We pay tribute to this spring's seniors. We'll show you the top 10 moments from the 08-09 season at UCF. And we bid farewell for the summer with our final Sports Night highlight. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome one last time to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us for our season finale. We'll get to the best of the 0809 season at UCF here in a moment, but first it was another busy week for UCF sports, particularly for baseball and golf. One team was finishing up its regular season, while the other was trying to extend its postseason. Let's take a look at the highlights. Out to Red Tail Golf Club once again for the final round of the NCAA Southeast Regionals. The Knights came in with a big lead and they did not give it up. Leading the way, Blaine Barber once again, who put up a school and course record tying 62 in the final round, finishing third in the medalist standings. Also, Brad Schneider was on fire. He shot 63 to finish in second place. Overall, the Knights finished 34 under par for the tournament, going wire to wire to take the school's first ever regional title, winning by 11 strokes over Arizona, South Carolina, and number one ranked Georgia, and earning a spot in the NCAA championships in Toledo later this month. You know, this whole year has been a great team effort. Um, from the coaching staff to the players, we all really, you know, put something together and did a really great job. So um, you know, I can't wait to, to get up to Toledo. We're going to you know, do some work in the next couple weeks and prepare ourselves to, you know, have a shot to win a national championship. Over to baseball, a makeup game for a rainout from March 31st, and it was a team effort on Tuesday against Stetson as seven pitchers combined to hold the Hatters to just six hits and route to a 5-4 to four victory. Back home for the weekend as the Knights welcomed Houston to town for the final series of the regular season. Game one on Thursday, Caleb Graham was outstanding, tossing seven and two-thirds innings and mowing down eight Cougars as the Knights pounded out four runs in the first inning and went on to take an eight to four victory. Game two the following night, Jagger Good was solid on the mound, striking out six in five and two thirds. But it was at the plate where the Knights smashed another record. Bottom of the fifth, Jake Huxtable. He goes deep to left and gone. It's UCF's 66th home run as a team this season, tying a school record set back in 1998. But despite all that, Houston would come back and take a 6-3 win. So that took us to senior day as the Knights bid farewell to 13 seniors on Saturday and sent them off in style. Kyle Sweat in his final home start held Houston to just one hit and five innings of work. Meanwhile, every senior in the lineup picked up at least one hit and the Knights take the series win over Houston. They set a new record for most wins in Conference USA and lock up a spot in the CUSA tournament next week with a 4-1 victory on senior day. Meanwhile, over to Tulsa, the track and field team posted its best finish ever in the Conference USA Outdoor Championships, finishing second overall. Jackie Coward won the conference title in the 400-meter hurdles in school record time. UCF finished with a total of 12 top fives. Next up, the NCAA East Regionals in North Carolina, May 29th and 30th. And the rowing team finished its season in third place in the region at the South and Central Region Championships. The second varsity eight boat had the highlight winning the C final in just over six and a half minutes. And for news on all UCF sports throughout this summer, all you have to do is log on to www.ucfathletics.com, your online home for UCF sports. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we pay tribute to the seniors who finished their UCF careers this spring. That and plenty more when we return.
Welcome back to the season finale of UCF Sports Night. Of course, this is our final show of the 2008-2009 school year, and that means many UCF student athletes are graduating from UCF and heading on to the next phase in their lives. And we thought it would be appropriate to pay tribute to all of them. Here now, our senior spring tribute. Check it out. You were down your luck, a ghost in the night. You walked through the dark just to keep on the light. And I know how hard it can be to believe at all. You were stuck. And congratulations to all the seniors who graduated from UCF this year. They will all be missed. Well, don't go away. Plenty more to come here on the season finale of UCF Sports Night. We'll take a trip in the Wayback Machine and show you our top 10 moments of the year. Don't go away. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to the season finale of UCF Sports Night. Now we've seen some amazing moments this school year here at UCF and we thought it would be fun to show you our picks for the greatest moments of the year. So we sifted through our hundreds of hours of video that we collected all throughout the school year and picked out what we thought were our 10 greatest moments of the 2008-2009 school year here at UCF. So without further ado, here now, our top 10 moments of the year in our Sports Night Spotlight. Moment number 10, football against USF at Bright House Network Stadium. The Knights were down 24 to 10 with 324 left, and then it happened. First, Michael Greco hits Corey Rabazinski from 13 yards out, and UCF is back within a score. Then the defense forces a punt, and Joe Burnett takes over. A brilliant return down to the USF 35. 
Two plays later, the unbelievable happened. They didn't say he was out of bounds. He was back to throw. He looks, he throws. His pass is going to be caught. Rocky Ross at the 15. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. He's in. Touchdown! Rocky Ross scores with 140 to go. And the Bright House Stadium is rocking. Michael Greco to Rocky Ross from 31 yards out. And the Knights score 14 points in a minute and six seconds to tie it up. UCF would fall in overtime, but what a comeback by the Knights in front of the home crowd against their arch rivals. Moment number nine, another comeback against another in-state rival. The men's tennis team facing number 59 FAU back on March the 6th. The Knights lost the doubles point and trailed 3-1 to one to the Owls, staring a loss right in the face. But then Johan Biegert won his match at number 4, 6-3, six, 6-2. Six, and then Eugene Dolgovic won a tough match at number 5, 7-5, five, 6-4. Six, and that tied the match at 3, and you could feel the tension at the tennis complex. So that left it to Blaze Schwartz at the number three position. In a grueling third set, he held serve to take a five to two lead, but then his legs started cramping up terribly. Visibly in pain, he had to break his opponent for the victory, and somehow he did it. And the place goes wild. A dramatic four to three comeback win for the men's tennis team over their rivals from Boca Raton, thanks to a gutsy effort by Blaze Schwartz. Moment number eight came later that same day, and L.V. Sorreau and Jenny Frizzell spent much of the year ranked as a doubles pair, but they first raised eyebrows nationwide that afternoon against Duke. Facing the 11th ranked doubles team in the nation, L.V. and Jenny caught fire, disposing of their opponents in short order, eight to three. Frizzell and Sorreau would stay ranked nationally for the rest of the season. Moment number seven belongs to the softball team back in April against conference rival Southern Miss. Rubber game of a three-game set, and this one went to extra innings tied at three. The Golden Eagles scored a run in the top of the eighth to take a 4-3 lead, but two walks, a sacrifice bunt, and two fielder's choices later, the bases were loaded with two out, and Abby McLean stepped to the plate. And McLean lines a base hit to right center. That's going to do it. Tyler scores, and Dean scores, and UCF wins it. Eric Lopez on the call. McLean's two RBI single gave the Knights a stunning 5-4 to four victory in eight innings against Southern Miss. Moment number six. Let's go all the way back to September 2nd, the first match at the newly renovated volleyball venue. And the Knights brought in one of the big guns, the third-ranked Stanford Cardinal, and a program record crowd of 1,568 fans came out to cheer on the Knights, the most ever to see a UCF volleyball match. Moment number five. Speaking of new homes, that's also what the rowing team got this year. And what better way to celebrate it than by welcoming Duke for the first ever meet at the new rowing complex. And the Knights rose to the occasion, sweeping all five races against the Blue Devils before a huge crowd who was cheering them on from the shoreline. Moment number four, women's soccer at the NCAA tournament first round action in Gainesville against the University of Miami. UCF fell down one to nothing to the Canes early, but Daniela Dos Santos had something to say about that. 31st minute, watch this gorgeous pass from Lauren Halbert, and Dos Santos taps that one in from six yards out to tie this thing at one apiece. Then just six minutes later, a penalty called on Miami, resulting in a PK for Halbert, and she sticks that one in the back of the net to give the Knights a two to one lead. Second half, the cherry on top from Dos Santos. Watch the gorgeous corner kick almost goes in, and Daniela's right there to tap it in from point blank range, making it three to one, and that would be the final. UCF gets the victory, advancing in the NCAA tournament past Miami. The Knights would finish the season 14, five and three with another NCAA tournament appearance. Moment number three, and we move to men's basketball facing conference rival Tulsa on Valentine's Day. And it was a momentous night as Jermaine Taylor hit this three in the first half. And with that, he became the Knights' all-time leading scorer in Division I play. However, it was not a lovely start for UCF as they fell down by 17 points with a little over 10 minutes to play. But back came the Knights, led by JT, the eventual conference player of the year, 
who racked up 22 of his 35 points in the second half. And the Knights chipped away and chipped away and finally took the lead in the final minute. But under 30 seconds to go, Tulsa's Glenn Andrews hit this three to tie it up at 72 apiece. That left the Knights with just 13 seconds to figure out what to do, and Coach Spiroff called on his freshman point guard, A.J. Ropsa, to save the day. Here's Mark Daniels with the call. Four seconds, three seconds. Ropsa floats it up, it rolls in with a tenth of a second to go. Ball game over. A.J. Ropsa wins wow. it. Ropsa's runner at the horn gave the fans a fantastic Valentine's Day gift a 74-72 win over Tulsa. Moment number two, the Conference USA Men's Golf Championships at Red Tail Golf Club up in Sorrento, Florida. The Knights were the favorites coming in, but it was tight heading into the final round. Still, UCF rode solid play all the way around to finish a wire-to-wire -wire win, going 18 under par as a team. Leading the way, Simon Ward, the junior Irishman, who fired a four under 68 in the final round to win the individual title, just one stroke better than his freshman teammate and Conference USA's male golfer of the year, Blaine Barber. The Knights win their first conference title in men's golf since 2004 and get an automatic bid to the NCAA Regionals. And now the top moment of the year, another conference title and what a run to get there. The women's basketball team went undefeated in conference at home, but they had to go on the road for the Conference USA Tournament in New Orleans. Coming in as the five seed, the Knights blitzed past Rice, Houston, and SMU to get to the championship game against Southern Miss. It was a hard-fought battle back and forth throughout, and it took overtime to decide it. But in the extra frame, UCF held the Golden Eagles to just two points and ran out the clock to take a 65-54 victory. Their first Conference USA championship and their first trip to the big dance in a decade. The Knights would fall by just five points in the first round of the NCAA tournament to North Carolina, but now they look forward to raising the first new banner in the new UCF arena. Mm, what an amazing year, and we hope to see plenty more moments like that in 2009-2010. Don't go away, we'll put a bow on things when we return, including our final Sports Night highlight of the year, when UCF Sports Night returns. Welcome back to the season finale of UCF Sports Night. Well, we've come to the end of a very long journey, 38 weeks since the start of the 2008-2009 school year, and it has been a true privilege to bring you all of the great moments from UCF Sports throughout this school year. We have a lot of people to thank for all their hard work on the show with UCF TV and UCF Athletics, but most of all, we want to thank you, the fan, for tuning in every week and seeing the best of UCF sports. We leave you now with our final sports night highlight of the year. And from all of us here at UCF TV and UCF Athletics, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you again next fall.
for three. Got it. Oh, boy. Feeling it. Jermaine Taylor. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.